10 seconds on the clock. How many things can you name that are always growing? Your relationship, your skills, your customer base. How about business on Shopify? Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling. Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Managing my website and viewing my analytics was so easy with Shopify. I had no experience with selling any merchandise online or having a website or anything like that. So I was super nervous coming into it because I thought it was going to be super difficult. But Shopify made it so easy for me, you guys. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash pretty. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash pretty now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash pretty. Yay! I know life can be a little uncomfortable sometimes, you guys. I feel it. But wherever you're headed, it's easy to keep up the pace when you're wearing your Allbirds. Allbirds increased durability delivers lasting comfort, turning your cloud nine into a 10. And they're designed with sustainability in mind, so you can feel good with each step you take. So last week I went on a hike and I haven't done a hike in a good while. And I knew that for this specific task, I had to take my all birds because I knew that my feet were going to get tired. But with these shoes, I was going to stay comfy the whole time. Lately, I've really been liking their tree runner style. They are so cute, so comfortable, and they're very much like everyday vibes. I feel like I can match them with almost any comfortable outfit that I have, and it just puts it together super cute. And they just came out with their Allbirds Wool Runner 2. So it's a next level revamp of the Colt Classic. They have enhanced cushioning and super soft materials. The new Wool Runner 2 sets you up in a comfy all day wear that's built for bliss. It's literally comfort redefined. They're awesome just because their premium materials make them ultra soft and they make them just feel great on your feet. Get yours at allbirds.com and use code PRETTY and score a free pair of socks with purchase today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com code PRETTY. This podcast is presented by NYC Cosmetic Pro Fix Stick Concealers. NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealer is super affordable at only $9.00. You can get three shades for less than the price of a more expensive one. It's the best bang for your buck. And my favorite part is that NYX Cosmetic Pro Fix Stick Concealer comes in 24 pro shades to correct, conceal, and brighten. I love incorporating these concealers to my everyday routine because they have so many different colors. Some are perfect for my under eyes. Some are more like for spot correcting. And then I can use their deeper shades for contour. So you can literally use them for everything. And they are so smooth and they glide so nicely on your skin. They also contain hyaluronic acid. So it's really skin loving and works for all skin types, especially if you prep with a nice hydrating primer first. So best believe that it's going to cover up dark circles, redness, or hyperpigmentation. It's so pigmented, you really don't need to load it up. A little bit is just enough. Get your NYX Cosmetic Pro Fix Stick Concealers at your favorite makeup retailer. Welcome back to another episode of Pretty Not Smart with your host, Louis, a.k.a. The Baddest Perra. And yo, Ati. It almost yeah. sounded like I said, with your hose. <laughs> I was like, with your hose, hose Louie. Louie. Um, I think we're going to start off by addressing the elephant in the room. There's we, an elephant? 
I'm right here. All right. Ah, uh, you're. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels weird saying like the intro when I know a lot of you are wondering why we didn't upload. Yeah. Last week. And like, we're sorry, you guys. You yeah. have to know that something definitely had to go down in order for us to miss, because mm-hmm. we were on a roll. We had done thirty five episodes in a row. Thirty five or thirty four. I don't remember. But on a, on a row, miss. and we were like really proud of like doing it and yeah we literally every single like we film like a week before yeah right so seguidita las pinches semanas no tomamos ni un break ni pal pinche christmas yeah i know literally mm. but like you actually said like something um happened in our personal life where we just weren't like in the right headspace to film yeah and don't get me wrong like hasta yo like i almost wanted to like push through to like film an episode but you guys like i feel like we were both just kind of like mentally checked out we weren't here yeah we're like we this yeah i feel like even if we tried there was gonna be like i didn't want to talk about anything else but i also didn't want to talk about what was happening Mm because it just didn't i don't know it just it was not not only was it too soon but it just also wasn't going to be a comfortable thing for us to talk about yeah and i don't know i think that's one thing that i want to prioritize is like just how I'm feeling and allowing myself to feel how I'm feeling in the moment. There and you go. Yes. I definitely did not want to film something when I was not ready to yeah. do so. Yeah, and like I feel like our work is important, but I feel like it's such a good thing to prioritize your mental health and mm-hmm. your well-being before anything else. Yeah, and then also so. like we did see we were literally just talking about it before we started filming. We saw so many of you guys like literally asking us why there was no yes. episode or like you guys were like hello. Yeah, and like I told Louie, I was like that made me happy because I was like they care about yeah. us. They're like so no episode. <laughs> like literally in my DMs or in my comments, yes. like everywhere people were like hello. And I I don't probably a lot of you guys that are new or don't know we do have an Instagram. Mm-hmm. and we have a pretty not smart instagram so go stop the episode and go follow it right now because we do more updates there and we did leave like a little message as to why we mm-hmm. didn't post and we let you guys know ahead of time that there wasn't going to be an episode and i knew that a lot of people were looking for it because um or i don't know if you saw the views on the thing but we got a shit ton of views on it so then i was like everyone's probably like yeah still don't out stand so they went to the instagram like, what the fuck happened yeah and then i saw that i got a bunch of views so then i was like oh shit i was like people They're were literally like hello oh, i love you guys yeah, so make sure you follow pretty not smart on instagram yes. because that's where we put all of our our updates. live updates go on there yeah but i don't know um <sighs> i don't even know how to address what happened i don't really want to full on talk about it but um we briefly talked about it on a some episode on an episode a while back i don't remember which one it was yeah but we were talking about like our family dog and we were talking about like um how she was getting older yeah and how we were well how how i was really scared to think of the day where you know she would no longer be here with us and that i i don't know how i would handle it um yeah and unfortunately um um, our doggy Ruby passed uh, last week. Yeah, our baby girl. And it still feels really weird even saying that out loud. Like right now, I feel like, uh, I don't know, I felt a little sink I in my heart too. just saying it because. It's still really hard. It's it's like a very fresh wound. Yeah. And um, we both <sighs> talked about it on our on our personal Instagram as well. So thank you guys for all the sweet messages and dms i was kind of like hermit crab eyes where i was just hiding from everything but i did take a little peek at like my comments and then also my dms and uh thank you guys for the really sweet messages and dms a lot of people were like sending me pictures of like their puppies oh and, um, really yeah but like other doggies also like had paths and they were just like i don't know people were sending me really long messages about like how they were feeling and yeah. i don't know it almost felt like because sometimes when moments like that, you feel really alone. Oh, my God. Yeah. And hearing other people's like stories and messages and even them sending me pictures of their like um, doggies that had passed. Like, I don't know. It made me feel good. Yeah. Not good, but it made me feel a little normal, better. I guess human. I don't fucking know. Because I felt really alone. Like, I was just like, I don't want to talk was. about my feelings. And I also felt so, oh, so like guilty trying to go through my day as well. Like trying to move on and yeah. do what you have to do. Yeah. I had no I energy have. to do it, but then doing it as well, like almost just kind of made me feel more like shit. 
so it was like really hard and then after it happened then the next day um i wanted to post a little picture of her because dude i had so much anxiety and i didn't know what to do with it yeah like i was hurting so bad like, i'm telling you guys i could not stop crying for like two days yeah and like alex was trying to help me a lot thank goodness i have my kids but i was checking in on louis because i know that louis was by himself with his yeah. two doggies and i was like if i'm feeling like shit like how is louis and like my mom feeling mm -hmm. but something really wanted me to post her and like i just i really wanted to just i don't know look at pictures of her and i was scrolling through my instagram and i saw old pictures with her yeah so that's when i decided the next day to post make a little post for her mm. and so many people reached out to me and mm. like you said telling me about their stories and telling me about everything and it made me feel like like you said not alone yeah or like kind of not crazy kind of like it's okay for you yeah. to feel like this about your doggy, like because i was dude i was going through it yeah and when people were telling me their stories i was like oh my god i felt more love and i just felt like ruby spirit was being like lived more yeah. if that makes sense you know because more people felt it in their mm -hmm. hearts so yeah yeah it's a, it's and it's like with me um i've talked about it too that like it's really hard for me to like express when i'm feeling sad especially like I have a hard time with, like, a lot of my emotions, but being sad is, like, one of the hardest for me to express or, like, admit. But I didn't know what to do. I was kind of going in my head because, like, well, one, like, Ruby passing was so difficult for me to even just process in my head. Like, sometimes I would be like, no, like, it didn't happen. But then yeah. I'd get a flashback and be like, it did happen. And it was just a lot. But um, I didn't know what to do when it came to, like, social media because... um oh my gosh it's hard for me to like express when i'm sad mm -hmm. so like ugh, like i wanted to post for the same reason as you like i wanted to go down memory lane even for me mm -hmm. but then also like you said just put ruby out there and you know just it was gonna make me feel better but i also didn't want to do it because i didn't want to be like sad on social media because like i don't know it's just hard for me to do that yeah but then i also didn't want to like continue posting as if nothing just happened oh when God, like I'm, yeah. I'm obviously not like okay yeah so it's just like a lot of going back and forth but i will say like posting that not only made me feel nice for like i felt like i was doing it for ruby mm -hmm. but it also made me feel nice like seeing the comments yeah dude look i was reading your comments too and they yeah. were so cute like i don't know why like this is something that i'm still trying to figure out but it's really hard for me to like express my feelings because like for example when i'm sad i feel like people are gonna laugh at me <laughs> so literally i was traumatized you as a kid literally like when i was like, like <laughs> look, even my caption dude fuck? when i was writing my caption i literally wrote that from the heart like i was crying when i wrote it Aww. but i was like i'm like i just wrote it because i do that a lot i don't know if y'all do that with your notes but i sometimes be writing shit on my notes whenever i'm just like feeling a type of way uh -huh. so that, that's what i had wrote in my notes and that Aww. wasn't gonna be my caption i was just gonna literally uh, my caption i think it was gonna be something like um um i think it was just gonna say like ruby and like we'll miss you something super like simple because okay. i didn't want to express anything mm -hmm. but then i was like no that's not how i feel dude so then i actually put what i wrote on my notes as the oh, caption you were vulnerable yeah and bitch i was all crying Same. oh my god and then posting it too because like again i wanted to like almost like honor ruby when i posted it i got even more sad and i was upset because i was like how but because it, it almost made it real it made it real and yeah. then i was like oh, i thought this was gonna make me feel better like you said because i wanted to i don't know also like my instagram is something i use a lot and i almost feel like it's like a reflection of my life mm -hmm. so i wanted to have ruby on there because i was like ruby's a humongous fucking part of my life and i wanted to have her on there yeah but yeah it like made it real and i was just like fuck dude like, same i feel like i was reading comments mm -hmm. and just seeing her name and like yeah. all the little comments made it more real for me so at some point i stopped reading comments because i would just keep crying more yeah. and i was like okay i need to put my phone down mm -hmm. and for like two days i think i i just didn't want to post nothing like literally yeah. nothing my snapchat did i just it didn't feel right to me yeah it felt so weird i was like dude i feel like fucking shit i'm not gonna pretend like eh. yeah like or and i also felt like guilty i was just like yeah i don't know it's like some uh, like m trying to move forward after like a passing was like a mind fuck for me yeah because uh, it, it kind of gave me like a reality check of like life goes on and that makes me feel like shit yeah like that was like a little pause but yeah. like for us we have to keep going and she's kind of just stopped oh there. my god yeah that literally you'd it like, was 
that it. and that's I, how i felt yeah i was like oh my god like i just kept thinking of that moment where it stopped and it like got to me so bad <sighs> yeah and every time we talk about it like i feel this heaviness on my chest it's hard and if you guys have lost a fur baby you know it's so hard mm. because they're literally a part of our life like she was with us for 15 amazing years and also just like their innocence like oh um i saw a post like long time ago and it kept popping up in my head where it's like um like a doggy's purpose really is to just like be loved yeah <sighs> Sorry, no, I don't want to cry. Emotional, yeah, I, I know, I but I did my makeup. <laughs> same, <laughs> but I just want to say, like, you know, for everyone who has their little fur babies, like, just hug them tighter, play with them. Today, it really is like that's really like their purpose is, you know, to be loved. I feel to like <laughs> complete opposite from a cat. Ah, like, he. I love cats. She's got the <laughs> Cats are very independent. They're just like, ah, yeah, they come yeah, in fast. Do like Jasper. Like, yeah, like well, we can talk about Jasper in a second. <laughs> but they're very independent. They're they're also obviously fucking love like yeah the human interaction love. But with a dog, I feel like you're like for example, my dogs are always fucking behind they're me. Chicles. No me dejan. Like they're even if I'm in the chicles. restroom, if I'm sitting eating, like, they're like just staring at you. <laughs> they're like what's next? Like literally, it's isn't it so crazy how much. They love us. Yeah. Like, like and that's that literally is it. insane. Like how much they love us. They follow us around. Like all they want to do is, is be with us. Yeah. I have, so I have two doggies. I have a Shih Tzu and a Cavalier mix. Dude, I didn't know. Sebas from La Platica told me that Shih Tzus are like cuddler dogs. Mm -hmm. So I think I had I told you that. that they're, they're the type of dogs, I guess, back in their old times, they, um, they were like praised because they were meant to protect their owners from the cold. Like, se les, you know how they have a bunch yeah. of fur? Se les subían para estar calientitos. Aww. So they <laughs> love cuddling and that's why they have their long fur to like keep us warm. Because so, fucking Bella siempre dude, bien dejada. Bella, like every time you want to no, cuddle No, she her. just wants to be on yeah. me. Like literally, she would be happy just cuddling 24-7. No, like, suck a No, literally. <laughs> she Aww. loves cuddling. But yeah, it's so crazy how much they love us. Yeah. Our doggies. But yeah, um, so that's why we didn't upload last week. And we kind of just wanted to like um, go down memory lane and talk yeah. about our childhood with Ruby. Because like Yotsi said, we had Ruby for 15 yeah. years, which it's crazy because I don't have like memories past Ruby. Like before Ruby in my life, like I was fucking I think i was like in fourth grade when we got ruby or third grade you were really little yeah because i was we had nine. done the math i think you were nine and i was like 12 10, yeah. 11 12 like 13 yeah and even like on like when i was posting little videos on my instagram i was like seeing some of the videos and i was like damn i was like so little like dude and i don't remember that those yeah. videos that you posted yeah. i was like what the fuck i look literally chamaco but yeah it's been 15 years talk just, about when we first got her i don't know if you ever if we ever talked about that oh i love this story it's it was so, so cute but cute. It's, it's funny too um so ever since i was little i've always wanted a dog <laughs> dude Part that was because, like every birthday he would uh, wish for yes, a dog <laughs> that was the baddest spirit. <laughs> but literally or even um because, like, it's a joke now. I love to make a joke about it. But, like, I'm not smart, you guys. Like, I'm really dumb. <laughs> so, I remember when I was little, um, I would, like, almost flunk my classes. Dude. Like, not pass. And there was actually this one time that I flunked a class. It was um, second grade going into third grade. Mm -hmm. No pase, but I remember my parents had to sign this form where they agreed that they were going to hold me back. And my parents were like, no, 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 you guys aren't holding him back. Uh, so push him. Like, otro grade. <laughs> So they let me go to third grade, but they were going to let me be there for like two weeks and see if I could like, quote unquote, keep, keep up. up. And because I did, they left me there. <laughs> but I remember um, my dad would almost like bribe me. He'd oh, be like, yeah. if you pass this grade, I'll get you a dog. And I was like, Yee! so I was like, oh, in chingas. I started like studying and doing all my work <laughs> because now my dad said like, if I pass third grade, he was going to get me a dog. And I was yeah. like, hey, baby, that movie. I was yeah. like, now you're no, speaking no, my language. You wanted to pass second grade, no? No, no, no. It was third to fourth. Oh, see? Because second is oh, one that I flunked. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so it was to pass. So um, 
Y también my abuelito, he would tell me the same thing. He would always say that que me iba a traer un chihuahua de, de México. México. Siempre. Sí, yo te traigo uno de México. He's, he'd always be like, es que every time uh, nuestro abuelito would come visit, he'd be like, ¿qué quieren que les traiga de México? And I would be like, un chihuahua. Like, And he'd be everything. like, pues ahí en la calle bien harto, yo te agarro uno y te lo traigo. Yes, he would always tell me that always. in Mexico there was like chihuahuas everywhere, or like just dogs in general. Yeah. So I was like, won't well, bring me one. <laughs> I pick one up, bring it. <laughs> so I think that was my dad's leverage was for if I passed. So I don't think my dad actually meant it. Though. No, he didn't. Because he was just like, este no le voy a comprar perro. Mm -hmm. ¿Dónde va a sacar un perro? <laughs> he see, but, well, he probably didn't think I was in a bath. <laughs> So when I pass, I was like, where's my dog? <laughs> and my dad was, my dad doesn't like dogs yeah, like that. So he, he was not about to go out of his way looking for a fucking Hell dog for no. Louis. But I really thought, so then <laughs> when I passed, no me trajo el pinche perro. So then I was like, Ugh. so I would always para todo. I'd be like, where's my dog? Where's my dog? Never bought me a fucking dog. So this one random day, <laughs> so I was Dude. in fourth grade, I think, because no me lo compró. Um, I was playing outside in my neighborhood with one of my friends. And um, they would, they would, um, ¿cómo se llama? Like, when they just make their dogs have babies and sell them. They're breed. Breed, that's what it is. So they, así, en eso se enfocaban. He had like this crazy. They're all backyard breeders. Yeah, literally. <laughs> But he had like this crazy type of dog. I don't know. They were worth a lot of money. Uh -huh. But I didn't really know anything about it. But our other neighbor, since they know they're like breeders and they love dogs or whatever, um, she was outside with a box and we were playing outside in our little skateboards. Mm. And she's like. Um, his name was Alvaro. Alvaro. <laughs> She was like, Alvaro. Um, no quiero perros. <laughs> And then my ears go ting. I was like, what? Because <laughs> well, my friend Alvaro, he had dogs, but like those weren't the type of dogs I wanted. I always liked little dogs, you guys. He And, had like designer dogs. And they were big ass dogs. Yeah, so then I was like, dogs. these dogs gonna eat me. So the his neighbor was like, Alvaro, no quieren perros? And he's like, Oh, déjale digo a mi papá. So he runs inside to go tell his dad, like, oh, like, they're selling dogs. And I was like, oh, and I run across the street Dude, to go look. Ver, pinche chismoso. Yeah. And I was like, dogs? <laughs> so I go, and you guys, literally, like, out of a fucking storybook, um, in a little cardboard box, she had, like, nine doggies. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh, my God. Like, my eyes twinkled. Oh. And out of all of the doggies, my eyes immediately went to Ruby. Like, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, she's so pretty. Because I think all the other ones were chinitos. Yeah, they all had curly hair. Because the dad, the dad was a poodle. Uh -huh. And the mom was like a straight hair chihuahua mix. Yeah. But she was pretty big. I don't know what she was. Yeah. But they were like a medium-sized dog. Yeah. Pero todos tenían pelo chinito. All of them, all of them. And they all had spots. Uh, all of them. See. And Ruby was the only one that was pure white. Like, Blanquita, not a single hair. fucking spot in her body. She yeah. was all white. And then my eyes went to her and I was like, <gasps> so then I grabbed her and I was like, oh my God. Oh. And then I was like, a cuento los venden. I don't remember <laughs> the fucking price. But then I was like, um, is it okay? Um, but all in Spanish. I was like, está bien si se lo puedo llevar a mis papás para que lo vean. And she was like, see, see, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there I'm like running back home with Ruby in my hand. And I was like, oh. <laughs> she was like this. Literally big, like the size like of my this, hand. Yeah, probably. size of a palm. And I go inside and I was like, pa, mira. And my dad's like, eso chingado que estás haciendo ese pinche perro. Todo eso que la pinche calle. My dad was full. Because, y'all, oh we don't know. God. Well, I think Yoati put it into, like, a good perspective. Because, like, my dad doesn't like dogs. But I was like, I don't know why. But it's like, I think you said it just gives him, like, the ick. Le da cosa. Yeah, yeah, like, he's just like, ugh. It's not necessarily that he's like, ew, fuck dogs, fuck that bitch. No, but, like, you know how us with insects? Yeah. Him like that, but with dogs. Yeah, like, he's just like, ugh. Or, uh, like, uh, not, not even dogs, all animals. My mm -hmm. dad le dan cosa a los animales. Like, like, he like, won't ugh. touch them. He won't look at them. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, but he's just like, uh-uh. Yeah. Like, there's no way. <laughs> so I walk in. I just remember my dad, like freaking out almost like mad because i walked in with a dog into the house <laughs> yeah and i was like please i was like me lo compras He's like no no regresa eso no me lo agarraste and i was like please and i look at my mom and i was like mommy because my mom is a, do a dog uh, an animal lover yeah. my mom fucking loves, loves animals. animals and my mom's like i was like mommy please and she was like no no yo no me meto en eso yo me voy a trabajar she was getting ready to go to work i remember so she went upstairs because i know my mom didn't want to put her input and no and i remember he showed me that ruby mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm like, sí, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, we're like, es niña, yeah, and it was a female dog too. So like, 
my dad immediately shut it off and said no. And I start bawling my eyes out. And I yeah. was like, please. I was like, you told me that if I passed the grade, you were going <laughs> to buy me a dog. So I think like I guilt tripped him so bad. Yeah. That like he felt for me and was like, <sighs> and like literally tell you guys, my dad hates animals. I think literally because he was like, fuck, I opened my mouth. Now. Yeah. So <laughs> I think like looking back at it, like I'm shook that he agreed to it. Dude, it, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah, there Shook. was, like, no way that he would have ever allowed us to get it. I think Yoatsi had tried in the past, and he was like, no. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you guys later what happened. <laughs> but I was, like, bawling my eyes on. I told him, I was like, well, you told me, and, like, I did. I passed, and you never got me my dog. I just remember crying. And I don't remember how much Ruby was, so. She was we, 20 bucks. No, no, that's what my dad paid for her. I think she was, like, 50. Oh. <laughs> and my dad's like, a ver, pues vamos. Like. To go see how much they were selling her for. <laughs> so here I am, like, fucking, like, happy. And my dad, ahí va. Ahí con su papá, ahí va. Yeah, and my dad, like, les hace plática. And he's like, how much? <laughs> and then I think, I think she was 50. And I was like, I'm not paying $50 for a fucking dog. <laughs> I am my dad, <laughs> Yeah. He was like, I'm not paying that. This was, like, fucking 2009, 2008. So, todavía tenía mucho valor los pinche 50 bucks. Yeah, so then I think my dad negotiated. And he was like. I don't, I don't even remember the conversation. I was just so, like, in Into love the, the doggies. doggies that I was lost. But I just remember my dad's like, oh, I have 20 bucks. And the lady, for some reason, I think it's because she saw how happy I was. So she was like, okay, that's fine. Yeah. And we got Ruby for 20 bucks. That's a crazy, huh? Bucks. Literally, like, what the fuck? 20 bucks. Yeah, that was crazy. And then I remember my mom left to work. Mm -hmm. And then she got off kind of early that night. She got off at, like, 8. And when she came home, we were, like, in the door waiting, like, with the dog. She's like, se agarraron el perro. Yeah. And then that's when she was like, oh, la cosita. Yeah, she, like, immediately just, like, created a fucking bond with Ruby. Yeah. My mom was so happy, like, and it made me happy seeing that, because my dad was so pissed that I was like, is this, like, a good idea? Yeah. That I couldn't, like, full on, like, be happy, because I was like, fuck, nos va a chingar. I, I think, I think that same day he took us to go buy her stuff, no? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't remember too well, honestly, because I was so little. But I do also remember before. So once my dad paid the 20 bucks, um, all the perritos were again in the box. And he was like, seguro que quieres esa. Because at this point, he's like, well, if you're going to get it, just get one that you actually like. Uh -huh. And I remember for a second, I considered another one. She had curly hair and she had black spots. She was all white, but with black spots. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Something about Ruby. She was the literally the only one with straight hair. The only one without spots mm. only fucking one and i was like no i want that one Aww, yeah we got our little ruby and then i remember how we got her name oh how i was trying to remember i remember we were throwing names out yeah. there but i don't specifically remember <gasps> you how. remember no oh, tell i remember me. tell me so i remember we were all sitting down like throwing names and we were just like oh we couldn't figure it out and it was andrea it was andrea yeah. huh? i knew it but andrea I was, like, was like i don't know where the fuck she got it from but she was like what about ruby and we were like oh, ruby yeah we i remember we had said that when we said ruby her like ears perked up oh yeah she looked at us or yeah. she did something when we said ruby that's why we yeah so we're like look and we're like ruby because we were very much throwing names and like calling her to see it. I don't know if we were, I mean, we were kids, so we thought she was going to be like, I want down one. <laughs> but we were yeah, I remember we said Ruby and she um, like reacted to it in a way. Like, yeah. I don't know if she turned or her ears went up and we were like, oh, Ruby. Yeah. Because we were going to name her like the typical like princess yeah. or like Blanquita. Blanquita. Or like all of these fucking typical names, but yes. we wanted to be different. Yeah, so we're like Ruby at us. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck Andrea came up with Ruby, but it happened. So yeah. we're like Ruby, Rubita. <laughs> Ten seconds on the clock. How many things can you name that are always growing? Your relationship, your skills, your customer base. How about business on Shopify? Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage Shopify is there to help you grow whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system wherever and whatever you're selling. 
Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Managing my website and viewing my analytics was so easy with Shopify. I had no experience with selling any merchandise online or having a website or anything like that. So I was super nervous at coming into it because I thought it was going to be super difficult. But Shopify made it so easy for me, you guys. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash pretty. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash pretty now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash pretty. Yay! I know life can be a little uncomfortable sometimes, you guys. I feel it. But wherever you're headed, it's easy to keep up the pace when you're wearing your Allbirds. Allbirds increased durability delivers lasting comfort, turning your cloud nine into a 10. And they're designed with sustainability in mind, so you can feel good with each step you take. So last week I went on a hike and I haven't done a hike in a good while. And I knew that for this specific task, I had to take my all birds because I knew that my feet were going to get tired. But with these shoes, I was going to stay comfy the whole time. Lately, I've really been liking their tree runner style. They are so cute, so comfortable, and they're very much like everyday vibes. I feel like I can match them with almost any comfortable outfit that I have, and it just puts it together super cute. And they just came out with their Allbirds Wool Runner 2. So it's the next level revamp of the Colt Classic. They have enhanced cushioning and super soft materials. The new Wool Runner 2 sets you up in a comfy all-day wear that's built for bliss. It's literally comfort redefined. They're awesome just because their premium materials make them ultra soft and they make them just feel great on your feet. Get yours at allbirds.com and use code pretty and score a free pair of socks with purchase today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com code pretty. But yeah, Andrea is good at names. Um, Andrea also named Peaches, which is our other doggy. She did name Peaches. And um, she helped me with Honey because I remember mm -hmm. I ran it through Andrea. I was like, hey, I don't know what her name might. And I gave her like a list and she's like, Honey's like the name. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I almost named Honey something fucking stupid. What? <laughs> Cookie? No, I almost named her like Dior. That's I swear. cute. It's cute, but like I love honey because it's like personal to me. Yeah. Like I have my I'm not gonna tell y'all, but I have my reason why I call I think I've told you, right? Why? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Aww. But it was like a little insider. And I think I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I mean, not only cause she, her color and honey, and she's so sweet, like honey. So like there were so many reasons, but in, initially it was like a little insider that I had that I El like, Milky just got leche. <laughs> well, because honey and milky. Stupid ass. <laughs> honey but, and milky. Yeah, Andrea helped me. She was like, I think honey's like the cutest one. Oh my god, I almost named her Miss Toller. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Bitch, I know. I'm so Where's happy I from? did it. It's from it was like a meme on TikTok where um, um it was yeah. like Miss Toller. <laughs> and then the, I forgot to remember how the video went, but I remember I would not stop calling her Miss Toller. And I remember I'd be like, I wanna name her Miss Toller. And like Fern at the time was like, We're not naming her that. Dude. And I was like, she likes it, and I'd be like, Miss Toller. And she'd be like, Ay, oh, Senora. <laughs> Senora Toller. I it's know. The stupid video was stuck in my head, but <laughs> imagine her name that. was Miss Toller. <laughs> Oh, senora, con su bolsita. I was gonna say like at the vet when they're like, um, Miss Toller, and I'm like, go. What's her name, Miss Toller? <laughs> I'm fucking. Her dead. name's Honey. But um, I hate you for that. I know. I'm so happy I didn't name her. Um, that. do you remember that first night that we spent with Ruby? No. She, you don't. My memory is already blurry from. So she was being hella chiona. 
Mm-hmm. Because when we took her away from her siblings, mom. Yeah, she was all alone. So she was all chillona, and we were kids, and we're like, shut up. <laughs> she <laughs> I was like, remember. Mama. She was crying yeah. the whole night. My dad was fucking pissed. God, you're a pinch of And um, I think it's because she didn't want to be alone, but my dad said that the only way we could like keep her is if we made sure she slept downstairs. Mm-hmm. So she had to sleep downstairs and she was crying because she was by herself and she stayed downstairs. Eventually, se durmió la perrita. And I remember we were in our room. We were like barely waking up. And then we just started hearing scratches at the door. <gasps> I do remember ¿Pedras? this. Oh my God. We yeah. We started hearing scratches and we're like, <gasps> we were scared. Because it's la casa. Just... No, it's la casa donde nos embrujaban. Sí, la pinche casa embrujada. So we thought it was like, I was like, <laughs> like how can I, I, I was like, <laughs> no, literally. Dude, we heard scratching and my parents, I don't know where they were. I don't know. But it was just me, Louis and Andrea. We're like, oh, my God. And it was all like <laughs> at the door. Yeah. And we're like, we didn't even want to open the door. We were so we're scared, scared. All pussies. Yeah. And then we opened the door and Ruby. She like she runs inside. Scared. She was scratching at the door. Oh, my God. You just unlocked that memory for me. I forgot about that. Because we were so shook because... She's a little ass dog that didn't know how to go upstairs. And y'all, we had a hell of stairs. Because it was a two-story little town home. Uh-huh. She figured out a way. She knew where we were at. Yeah. I think she smelled us, but she went up those stairs. <laughs> and like, how did she know what room to scratch yeah, at? Yeah. And we're like, ah! we crazy. were so happy. And we were just so shook. She was, the fucking stairs were, the high of the stairs were taller than, than her. her. So I don't know how She the probably fuck. took all night going <laughs> For real, she was like, Ugh. she'll take a little nap in between each stair. Like, I know, I do oh, remember Cita. that. Yeah, and I thought it was so cute. Yeah, and I, I just, I just remember, I couldn't believe that we had a dog. I was so excited every time we'd come back from like school just school. to play with her. And then my mom obviously created a bond with Ruby so quickly because we were all chamacos, so it was yeah. almost like Ruby was another kid for her to take care of because we didn't know how to take care of a dog. Like, for real, we didn't know any of that. So my mom was very much like, all right, another kid. And then I do remember like when my mom would pick us up from school, she would pick us up with Ruby. Oh, I don't remember no. that. When my mom would pick me up from like elementary school and she would like, she would walk. Oh, we, we si lived cierto. kind of far, but not far like that. Yeah. So my mom would like, she's like, oh, I need to like, pa caminar, like uh-huh. I'll take the doggy. So my mom would pick us up. I remember getting so happy every time she'd pick me up with Ruby. Like, and all the kids would be like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. All the kids yeah, all would the be kids like, would Ruby. Be petting her. She, I feel like she had such a good, like, you know how you can tell if a dog's mean or not? And yeah. Ruby had, like, the sweetest mm-hmm. vibe because kids, everyone would gravitate towards her. Mm-hmm. And she would never growl at a, a human. I was going to say, like, never. Not even just to, like, oh, because she's my dog and I want to make her look, like, the nicest. No, no when I say dude. Ruby is the nicest dog I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Like, even compared to Honey and Milky. Right. Yeah. No, but just... Well, Honey and Milky are very sweet. Um, they'll let anybody touch them. But I'm saying like Ruby wouldn't bark at nothing. She wasn't very territorial with humans. She was territorial yeah. with other dogs and cats. Mm-hmm. She did not like cats. Oh, yeah. She did not like cats. Hated cats. Uh-huh. But when it came to humans, she was like, mm, right away. I would she'd never be like, hear her like, <laughs> yeah, like growl at anyone or bite anyone. Just literally just being like, please touch me. Dude, to tell you, pinche traviesa. You want to know what she would do? <laughs> So at another point, we did have another, because she had puppies. Mm-hmm. So we had some of her doggies. Y era bien traviesa. She would figure out a way to escape our house mm-hmm. and would run to the park. Oh, yeah. Dude, the park was like a 10-minute walk. Yes. Like, it was a few blocks away, and we'd be like, oh, my God, Ruby se escapó. Yeah. And one time, I think we we were running around everywhere, and I think we ended up driving with my mom in her car. In Callahan. In Callahan Park. And we see Ruby in the center of the park being pet by, like, a thousand <laughs> kids. Yes, so, like, oh, I don't. she was just in the yard, and I think we went <laughs> to go do mandados or something, and we come home. She wasn't there. And, yeah, we go to the park, and then we're like, oh, she's being we're pet. Ready. She's, like, on her back, so, Dude. like, they're all rubbing her tummy. She was, like, hella happy, and I think she did it two or three times yeah. where she knew. She was she was probably like, if I go to the park, they're going to pet me. And I don't know how she remembered how to fucking Dude, go to the park. Dude, se escapaba, and she would go to the park. <laughs> yeah, estaba being pet by hella, because we're like, Ruby! <laughs> and all the kids already knew her. They're like, hey, Ruby. Like, <laughs> like, all, like, she's the fucking here. stray. I I know. Like, just, and we'd get all mad. We're like, yeah, this perfect home with a big-ass backyard, and you want to go run to the park. Yeah. But 
She liked the kids. Yeah, she loved like just playing. What? What's wrong with my face? <gasps> you scared me that you're going to say we're not recording. <laughs> I was going to get so mad right now. What's wrong with me? We'll switch so the whole life. Oh, we never film at this time. I know. We're like, <gasps> I know. We, we always film, film at night. At night. <sighs> um, but yeah, so we also oh, just. Literally with Ruby, you guys, Ruby went through all the struggles we did, <laughs> but it just created more memories and just crazy stories. So I remember the first time we moved because from that neighborhood that we lived in, it was an alley. So our house got broken into and shit. So my parents almost were picked up everything. And we're like, let's move. Yeah. So we were moving to an apartment. And one of the reasons why my mom did not want to move to this apartment was because we didn't have a yard and we were used to having a yard. Mm -hmm. But we really had like no choice like my mom was like we have to move like the fact that somebody went inside of our house and just stole and stole a lot of us. shit was happening in that neighborhood so it was like we need to move now yeah so we had no room to like oh let's choose where we want to go like no. no we found this apartment and um it was hard so at first my mom was crying and didn't know what to do and there were no pets allowed at this apartment. They were like mm -hmm. the newest little apartments in Watsonville. So yeah. it was like really strict. We couldn't bring pets or nothing. And even if we wanted to bring a pet, it was a fucking little balcony. Dude, the size of like tiny. smaller than a restroom. Yeah, it was, there was literally no room for pets. Yeah, so like even if you wanted to. like, And Ruby Ruby was already used to being like an outdoor. Being a free dog yeah, outside. Ruby would not sleep inside. Unless it was winter, then we would like bring her bring in. Bring her inside, yeah. But she was used to her little pasto and playing in the dirt and digging holes, like very typical dog. So my mom ended up having to be like, we have to get rid of Ruby. Mm -hmm. And I think we already had like, what, three, four years of Ruby? Yeah, yeah. No, mas. No. You think like four years? Like three, maybe. Okay, three like or three or four. four years. She was still young. She was in her teens. Yeah. So my mom ended up finding this lady. Que tenía un rancho. Uh -huh. And we were we were going to give her to. And my mom took forever to find somebody, but my mom really wanted Ruby to live like a good life. Uh huh. So my mom ended up going with this lady who had a rancho because she had hella more dogs. She had horses like and my mom wanted Ruby to just be free and play. Yeah. Not to be like. Encerrada. Yeah. And we were all so sad crying. My mom wouldn't let us see her cry, but I, just, I remember seeing her so emotional because yeah, she was I like, too. I don't want to get rid of her. Mm -hmm. But we had to. So we go and we meet the lady. I remember we pull up and my mom's happy because she sees like all the land. Like this lady was like living alone in this big ass rancho. So yeah. all the dogs were free. The dogs weren't like in a cage. The and dogs they had were, like, land. They had hella land. So we're there and like we're talking to the lady. We're all crying. We're like kind of saying our goodbyes to Ruby. And it's I never almost went like, to the rancho. Oh, you didn't go with us? Mm -mm. Oh, so it was just me and Andrea. Mm -hmm. I <gasps> never went. I don't know why. Probably had school or yeah. cheer or something. Oh, shit. So you're like experiencing it as I'm saying it. Yeah, I, I never went. It was a big ass rancho. And I remember we're talking to the lady. The lady's like giving my mom a breakdown of like how good of a life ruby was gonna have my mom even took like all all of ruby's like vaccination paper like everything mm -hmm. like my mom had everything and took her camita her house and everything and the lady takes us outside like and she's like yeah look she's gonna be so happy there's a bunch of dogs running and they're all like trying to meet ruby and but it was really sad because it, it was like ruby knew because she would mm. not leave our side yeah and um my mom starts like tearing up and the lady's like no 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 like you'll be okay like don't cry like she's gonna live she's a really fine. happy life mm -hmm. So we end up having to put Ruby in her cage because she wouldn't leave our side. And my mm. mom was like, we have to go now. So we put her in the cage. And I remember we're in the car. And bitch, I'm telling you guys, Ruby doesn't bark or nothing like that. We're leaving. Windows are rolled up and everything. And you hear Ruby crying in the cage. Mm. Literally crying. And my mom starts crying. We start crying. And... I just remember, like, I turned around because to, to view from the back of the car, and you just see Ruby in the cage. <laughs> yeah, and like the lady's just like waving bye to us, but like, it was so sad because like, yeah, she was gonna like be free and stuff, but it was she was just like not saying that they don't take care of their dogs. Of course they did, but I'm saying like she was just another dog. It wasn't like oh we got a new pup like the excitement yeah, that we had. Yeah, it was just like well, welcome. Yeah, like, it was very, just like added to very, the farm. Yeah, <laughs> and. I remember we were crying and my mom was crying. And then I, I remember too, once we got back to the apartment, it was like at night. 
I remember that like, ya habían pasado unos días and my mom would randomly start crying. And I'm like, mm-hmm. mommy, ¿por qué estás llorando? And she's like, no, I have something in my eye. Like, I remember her specifically telling but me But it was because of Ruby. She was crying and we were all crying. And um, my mom would randomly <laughs> make little trips to go visit Ruby. Yeah. And then I remember this one time. <laughs> I know what happened because she told me like in detail. She said que fue el pinche rancho. Mm-hmm. And that she saw Ruby and that, because my mom would go like spy on Ruby. Have it, como mm-hmm. estaba, yeah, like sure, mom would just pull up. Yeah, she would make sure that they were taking care of her, that everything was good. She said that, I guess it was a little cold and that Ruby was outside y que no tenía agua ni comidita. So my mom just started thinking the worst of the worst, right? What? That she, she just thought, because did she ever tell you? When she took her? Yeah. That's not the story. Yeah. A ver, what happened in your head? Because what I remember, my mom didn't tell us anything, like, of her plans. But I do remember my mom would go visit, and she was just like, oh, my God, like, she's not being loved. It was, like, just not being, like, specifically loved. Not she like was just how another dog. we were taking care of her, very, like, specific to yeah. her needs, making sure she had her food, her water, oh. she was walked, like, everything. And my mom was just, like, sad, always, like, crying, and she was like, I need Ruby. So I remember my mom, I don't remember if the, I don't remember what initiated it, but I remember she didn't tell any of us, but she went to the lady and I went and she was like oh it's se me olvidó que Ruby tenía una cita <laughs> she's like le falta una vacuna y la, la ocupa es muy urgente <laughs> and the lady was like oh si quiere la puedo llevar no pues yo ya estoy aquí la puedo llevar para que no se preocupe like I'll pay for everything and the lady was like hey. no, pues sí, pues sí. she's like yeah like take care mom I was like yeah like we'll bring her back <laughs> and then we're leaving mom was like I'm not bringing her yeah. back <laughs> She basically <laughs> stole her. Yes, because my mom. Did, I don't know why my mom just didn't tell her like, "Hey, like we missed her. We want her back." Yeah. It was our dog, and we didn't sell her to the lady. Nothing like we gave it to her. Yeah. But my mom made up a fucking excuse that Liva let her a vacuna and she like, never I took fucking her. Bringing her yeah. back. Yeah. I remember being in the car. Mom was like, "We're not taking her back." Yeah. And I was like, "What?" She was like, "She's coming home." And I was like, Yay. "I was all happy." I was like, Wee. And then she she told me after the story because again uh-huh. I didn't go. And I was like, "So you brought her back?" She's like, "Yeah, I just, I just took her back." So so she went and saw her like at night. And was just like pobrecita yes vibes. that uh-huh. she said que le dio like pobrecita vibes and that she was like i need to do something my uh-huh. dog can't be here my dog yeah. belongs like with us yes and she kidnapped her the next day and my dad was like what the <laughs> fuck? because she didn't tell anybody like she was she like didn't tell i'll anybody. fucking figure it out and yeah she, she, I, I remember we still crack about it now when we talk about it because i was like mom you literally just stole her, her. Ruby, yeah, she she stole her la, la cama y todo. Yeah, she's like, like all i need is ruby i'll get a new bed later <laughs> it was so funny but it was such a struggle because we lived in an apartment where no dogs were allowed so we snuck her in yeah. And we were always hiding her. I remember my mom would put her like under blankets. Yeah, to, like, take just, and we would have to walk her every single day because we were like on the third story. And we lived right across the owner. So the, the owner ma- lived. The manager. The, yeah, yeah, she lived in the apartment complex. So my mom was always like doing the most to like put a blanket or something. But before that, before the whole walking her, this is where Julie comes in. You remember? Wow. I thought I was the dumb one. Oh, when Julie took her in? Yes. Yes, Julie. I was going to say that, but I don't I don't remember where in the timeline it was. It was after we stole Ruby. <laughs> yes. Uh, my mom was really good friends with Julie's mom. Yes. And then my Julie also had a dog, but Julie's dog, Lucky. Lucky. And she also rests in peace. Yes, Lucky girl. Um, Lucky was like their queen. So, so she was an indoor girl. Yeah, and like every the whole house revolved around like Lucky, Lucky and Ruby were friends too. They were homies. But um my mom basically was talking to Julie's mom and was like, This is what's happening. I can't have her. Is there any way you can like keep her in your house in like, your backyard? In your backyard and I'll pay you. Like my mom was literally paying like rent. Yeah. Like just a little something for like giving us a part of your yard, basically. Yeah. My mom was just like telling the lady, like I cannot get rid of her. Like I'll, I'll come and feed her. I'll come and walk, walk her. Like, her. All you have, all you're doing for us is like having a place for her to live. Yeah. So, um, they said yes. Doña Nora, thank yeah. you for saying yes. Yeah. <laughs> she knew how much we loved her, and like she even gave yeah. us a key to her backyard whenever like we wanted to go. Like they literally just had a piece of their backyard for Ruby. For Ruby, like literally just sectioned off. Yeah, for Ruby. sectioned because their doggy Lucky would also go outside and like. Yeah, and she and had stuff. like she had a whole setup. She yeah. had a whole house. She had her bed, uh-huh. her food, everything. And then my mom, 
every day i think before and after work she would go feed mm -hmm. her and then after work she would go walk her mm -hmm. and then bring her back i have the like cutest memories of like we'd be pulling up and ruby would already know there's like a little hole in the fence she'd be and waiting you just see her, her eye <laughs> yeah, she'd and be i was like because like, we would go happy. see her we would try to go see her every day and go play with her yeah. And it was cute. So we did that. I don't remember how long we did that for. It was a while. But I think my mom got like tired of doing it. Like just going all the time. Because my mom was not going to abandon Ruby. She yeah, was she very was like, like we're doing all this shit. So then that's when we took her to the apartment. Yeah. And my mom bought like fake grass and put <laughs> it in the fucking, um, ¿cómo se llama? In the, the balcony. The balcony. And like Yuati said, my mom would walk her every morning and every night because yeah. Ruby had nowhere to go to the restroom. And Ruby was an outside dog for a while. So she was used to only peeing and pooping in like real dirt and shit. Uh -huh. So like she aguantaba la Ruby. She was like, oh, and there was no way she could pee because our balcony, I don't know if you remember, had like little lines. Oh my God. Yeah. So if she freaking peed, it would go downstairs. It would go like straight to the bottom. And then imagínate, they would be like, um, who the fuck's peeing up there? And then they would <laughs> like know my we kids. Had <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom had like the balcony blocked off and everything. Cause yes. like, it was just like a fan. So you could see Ruby if you were like outside and you looked up, even though we were like all the way up in the third floor. Uh huh. But, um, yeah, so we did that for a while, my and, mom. And there was a really big park where we lived to, a big Fanage park. Was, yeah, it was so pretty. Oh, my God. We loved that park. It was right there. And we would spend a lot of our time there growing up. So, of course, every time we would go outside, we would take our dog with us. So yeah. Ruby was always with us at Fanage Park. Um, I forgot the name Fanage Park. Do, do you remember that one night she fucking got off her leash? No. Um, at Fanage <gasps> Park? Yeah, we couldn't catch her. We were crying because yes. we're like, we're done. The The park is humongous. humongous. And it was connected to a lot of neighborhoods. Uh -huh. So the park was like in the middle of like Bienarta <laughs> land and so many houses. And it was night. Mm -hmm. And we were running no, around. She ran away in the day and it said turn night and we couldn't find yeah, her. Yeah, we couldn't find her, dude. We were going around the neighborhood asking we had if all anyone of our had friends seen a too dog. Everyone like, was like, Ruby! Everyone you got. We had a lot of friends. Yeah, like 10 friends helping us find our freaking dog. Uh huh. Y nomás me acuerdo que ahí estamos. It was late. Even my parents came out looking for her. Nadie la encontraba. And eventually we just hear, or we, we start saying, Ruby, allá desde bien lejos es una pinche manchilla blanca yes, running to us. Yes, her, literally. And I was like, Ruby! And I, when she said that, my heart was like, <gasps> pinche Ruby. She like literally got off the leash somehow. I don't even know. And we couldn't find her for like fucking six, hours. seven hours. We to the point where like we almost gave up. We're just like, she's gone. We were crying. I remember we were mm -hmm. all crying because we were like, that's it. We lost her. She's gone. They party, took her in. Yeah. And even my mom was like, look, she's cute. Family probably was like, come in. And, yeah. you know, that was the end of Ruby. <laughs> and in some way, she fucking found us. <laughs> Ruby. Le dimos sus buenas nalgadas. Yeah. Like, Ruby. No, do we literally were like, fuck, yeah. fucking escape ever again. She was like, yeah. She's like, well, I don't this even is why know how she escaped, but that was crazy. Did I talk about the story with the, the incident that happened at the dog park? I don't remember <gasps> if I said it on the podcast or not. No. No? I don't think so. What happened? So this is like a fucking ugly memory that I have. Um, this is one of the reasons why I get so scared to walk my dogs. So I remember, like you actually said, we would all walk Ruby or like if we were going to the park, we would like take Ruby. So I remember I was already like in middle school. So I was no longer like a chamaco. I was like in eighth grade and I was going to go to the park. So I was like, oh, let me go walk Ruby. So I would love taking Ruby to the dog park because there was also a dog park in that park. Yeah. And I loved seeing Ruby like a, like um, play with like other dogs or whatever. But it was hard because there was a small dog area and a big dog area. And Ruby was a medium size, like medium. Yeah. So I never knew what fucking side, side because she was too big for the little dogs, but too small for the big ones. And sometimes I would put her in the little one. But some of the ladies with their chihuahuas would just be like, Ugh. like yeah. you could tell that they were like upset, like that I was there. So I remember that day I was like, OK, I guess Ruby, we're going to the big one. Aww. So we were in the big one and everything was fine. Ruby plays with all the dogs like she loves playing. So she was playing with all the dogs. They were all being super sweet, whatever. And um, this fucking dog, fucking stupid ass dog. It was like a fucking German shepherd. And um, Ruby, again, has never had problems with dogs. All the dogs there seemed very friendly as well. But the fucking owner, again, it wasn't their fault either, but they throw the ball and it just so happens to land right in front of Ruby. And I was with Ruby, like I was standing with her, like just watching her like walk around. 
is like lands like really close to her and ruby like goes to smell it she didn't even like bite it or nothing this fucking dog because he's aggressive with his stupid ass toys runs to ruby and i don't know he was running to ruby i thought he was running to the ball and he bites the fuck <gasps> out of her i remember now and literally you guys like his jaw was like fucking opened up and like grabbed her and like he literally mm. stabbed her with his teeth Chepero and pendejo. ruby just starts crying and i freak out and um i start trying to grab ruby like pick her up and this dog is grabbing onto ruby like she was a fucking toy <gasps> and is like yanking her from my arms and the owner quien sabe Chepero. after he just threw the fucking like doesn't grab their dog doesn't call it like i just remember like freaking out and the dog's like fighting ruby because he thought Ru ruby was gonna get his ball so um i'm trying to grab ruby and like i would never hit a dog but bitch you best believe i kicked the fuck out of the dog and i'm Good. so sorry and like i che perro pendejo. I, but my dog was crying and this dog was oh, oh i remember he like grabbed her como si fuera juguete hasta la sia, sí. <gasps> Baboso, and estúpido, cabrón. Ru, yeah ruby doesn't fight so yeah. i just remember her crying and looking up to me to like pick her up and like not growling or trying to bite back but just kind of like leave me the fuck alone and Dude, crying the fucking owner so then i'm like kicking the dog and it's not letting go of ruby so then i grab the leash and i start like fucking almost like whipping the dog <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this <laughs> but i literally hitting the fuck out of it i think le di un buen putazo al perro that it finally let go of ruby so I grab Ruby and Ruby's crying and I'm bawling my eyes out and bitch I run out of there and I'm running home because I, I want to I want to take her to my mom and the owner never comes up to me like to be like I'm sorry like is she okay Baba nothing everyone's just Ew. shook that it happened so I grab Ruby and I'm crying and I'm running back home and Ruby's bleeding like bleeding bleeding and crying and just like I run to my mom I was like Ruby and like we immediately go um to the fucking vet mm -hmm. or whatever and then yeah it was done um medicina and pomadas but ruby i remember she had literally whole like I a remember. hole in her yeah pobrecita she was like down bad for a while like ugh. like a little weak trying to recover hasta, hasta le quito pelo el estupido baboso, but pero. that's why that's another i do remember that now i a big reason why i don't like taking my dogs to dog parks yeah I i'm just, terrified of dog parks yeah i'm just terrified of walking my dogs in general like I think I've talked about it on Snapchat too, where I was like, I hate when people come up to me with their dogs or yeah. like, or where they're like, oh, like, let them eat. Like, and it's not because I'm like, get away from my dog. I'm just so scared. So traumado. Because of I'm what like, happened? Yeah, you're like, I'm okay. You never know how another dog is going to react. I, yeah. To be fair, I don't even know how my fucking dogs are going to react sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so like when people are like, oh, like, uh, I always walk to the other side of the, the, sidewalk Third or i go the opposite way like i just don't like any dogs being around my dogs because i freak oh, the fuck I out i totally forgot about that yeah so that really fucked with me after that i was just like mm -mm. it's like ruby you're not playing with dogs <laughs> no dogs for you this podcast is presented by nyc cosmetic pro fix stick concealers NYX Cosmetics Pro Fix Stick Concealer is super affordable at only $9. You can get three shades for less than the price of a more expensive one. It's the best bang for your buck. And my favorite part is that NYX Cosmetic Pro Fix Stick Concealer comes in 24 pro shades to correct, conceal, and brighten. I love incorporating these concealers to my everyday routine because they have so many different colors. Some are perfect for my under eyes. Some are more like for spot correcting. And then I can use their deeper shades for contour. So you can literally use them for everything and they are so smooth and they glide so nicely on your skin. They also contain hyaluronic acid. So it's really skin loving and works for all skin types, especially if you prep with a nice hydrating primer first. So best believe that it's going to cover up dark circles, redness, or hyperpigmentation. It's so pigmented, you really don't need to load it up. A little bit is just enough. Get your NYX Cosmetic Pro Fix Stick Concealers at your favorite makeup retailer. We, after living in that house for a few years, we ended up moving to final house that we lived in watsonville we lived in the last house for years yeah. like 10 years in yeah. watsonville california <laughs> and ruby that? had a big ass yard there yeah, like she did. that yard was perfect for ruby that's one of the reasons why we were so excited to move there is because we knew ruby was gonna have so much room to to run um, to run and, and the play. landlord también 
well she had dogs so she let us have our dogs she's yeah. like yeah you can have dogs we're like yeah <laughs> yeah and that's where ruby thrived and then after that we brought her to la and just <laughs> ruby had just, a lot of moves Pobrecita. that's what i was saying like i we literally grew up with ruby she did everything with us from the beginning from elementary school to our first place or second place to the last house in watsonville to la like i iba la pinche ruby Dude, but those yes, lados que todos los lados ahí va yeah. pinche ruby She's like, okay. and oh, it was really love. cute too like um i saw a lot of our friends like posting for ruby yeah i saw that too or just messaging me because like yeah like i really wish that everyone got to meet ruby yeah because i feel like her. if anybody if you were close to us you knew Ruby. Yeah. Everybody knew Ruby because she was such a big part of our lives. And everyone loved petting her and just yeah. like, yeah, being with her. So I love. It's really, still really sad for me to think about. But honestly, the only thing that gets me through it is an, I know we gave Ruby an amazing life. I was about to say the same thing. And it makes me like, I'll get so sad. But then I think about the good memories and it makes me so happy. Like, I'm just like. As sad as I am, like, I'm just, like, I am so happy with the life we gave Ruby. Mm -hmm. She experienced everything. She, I feel like she had an amazing doggy life, like, being walked all the time or, like, fucking, she even, lit, after a while, she stopped being an outdoor dog. She was an indoor dog with us and, like. And I feel like it's crazy because she definitely grew up with us and she saw us grow up. Yeah. And I'm kind of glad because, like, when she was her youngest, when they're the youngest, they have all of the energy in the yeah. world. And that's when we were mm -hmm. kids and like Louie and Andrea, especially, and they got to really like take advantage of them. They would always run with her, walk with her, whatever. And then as we got older and we weren't able to do as much with her, yeah. she also got older yeah. and she, she like these last couple of years, my mom would want to walk her. And she's like, mm -mm. Yeah, like she would like, give out. I'm she done. was just tired. She se cansaba bien pronto. So she definitely like grew with us and it was just, it was just very perfect. And even after, like, we moved out, my mom still gave her an amazing, amazing, amazing life. Like, I loved yes. seeing how my mom would, like, care for Ruby and, like, the little things she would do for her. To tell you guys that my mom cared so much for Ruby that a lot of times she would cancel family trips. Oh, yeah. Because she was like, no, ¿dónde voy a dejar a mi Ruby? Yeah. And she's like, no, yo no me puedo ir. ¿Dónde voy a dejar a mi perrita? Yeah. Dude, the one vacation that we took, Ruby? Uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, where did we go? Fuck, Palm Springs? Palm? No, close. Joshua Tree? Joshua Tree. We went to Joshua Tree. I, I was going to say, that was one of like the last trips we took, Ruby. And yes. Es que se cayó la alberca. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I forgot about that. Se cayó la alberca. <gasps> oh my, and I was about to say, like, that trip, I remember, like, loving that trip, but it made me sad because... um. I realized how old Ruby was because we took all of our dogs. You actually yeah. took her dogs. I took my dogs and we took Ruby. Like we took all the dogs. My mom. Trip. Yeah. My mom doesn't didn't like leaving. Well, none of us like leaving our dogs when we go on trips. My mom either takes care of them or something. But this trip, we all took our dogs and um, we got to see like Ruby was just always sleeping. Yeah. She was just tired. Like our dogs were like, ah, like playing and, and she running. didn't want to play. And they would like try to play with her. And she'd be like, like, She's like go away. This. Yeah. Don't bug me. <laughs> I remember <laughs> and my mom. Is bien cuidadosa with Ruby. <laughs> Nothing ever happens to Ruby because my mom always has her eyes on her. And I don't know how the fuck Ruby was outside. Well, somebody left. The there sliding was door. Huge ass lighting doors in this house. This mm -hmm. was what? This was when Ella was born, you guys. So like a year. year and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. Year and a half. And somebody left the sliding door open. Mm -hmm. And Ruby, yeah, it was a year and a half. So she had already lost some of her eyesight. She was a little blind. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she couldn't really see where she was going. Mm -hmm. And she went out the door. I don't know where I was at, but you guys just told me that <laughs> Ruby, like, went out the door. <laughs> she was like, let me go get some fresh hair. And she didn't know there was a pool. Yeah, because obviously she doesn't know that fucking... Pool. Like, I feel like the way she would get around in our, our houses, like, because she wasn't completely blind. She could still see, but I, I want to say it's, like, for people with glasses where everything's just blurry. So you can't yeah. fully see. And um, she didn't know this house, so she didn't know how to, like, fucking get around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she... This... Uh, Ruby would not get up. Yeah, you know, the one time she decides to get up, she's this like, happens. So she's like, I'm gonna go get some sun. So I guess she walked out and I estaba la pinche alberca and I guess Ruby was like, Gum. she slipped and just went poof and she just fell into the water. I don't know who saw. My mom just heard like a, psh, a splash and like panicky was like, oh my God, Ruby. In chinga, they got her out. And yeah, Ruby they was would. like, 
<laughs> but she was in there for like like maybe seconds. two seconds because my mom and chinga realized it and ran and like got her she was just soaked like great <laughs> well she said it was the sound of like the water was like and i was like <gasps> and um i think she got scared because she might have thought it was uh-huh. travis and i just remember coming back from where the fuck i was at and ruby was all wet and i was like why is ruby wet <laughs> and she's like she fell in the pool and i was like <gasps> ruby was like <laughs> i was like oh my god i oh, felt so bad pobrecita. i know my poor little niece so pools are dangerous when you have your fur babies yeah especially if they're not familiar with the with the house or the area ya están yeah. grandecitos. and i just thought of something you know how louis always comes up with nicknames for we I, we talk about this literally oh, yeah. every episode if you're close to louis he will give you he'll baptize you with a nickname, with a nickname. what were ruby's nicknames so one of them was that that why that that okay so <laughs> So I would call her Nunis. I think we would all call her We would her all call her Nunis. So the cariñito would be like, Nunis. Even our friends were like, where's Nunis? Yeah. <laughs> Nunis. So yeah. Ruby was like, when you were mad, like, Ruby. But Ruby. most of the time, I was like, Nunis. 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 And then um, I started calling her Dab Dab. I'd be like, Dab Dab. And she'd already <laughs> know. But because I'd always go, up, up, Ruby, up, up. Oh. Come on. So I just started saying, Dab Dab. I don't know why. <laughs> dab Dab. <laughs> and then another nickname of her was Ruby Numero Dos. Because no, that's what you called her baby. But then it stuck to her because the <laughs> baby and Mostama. But Ruby, at some point, she also had um, puppies. And one of the puppies looked exactly like Ruby. Copy and paste to Ruby. Copy and paste. So Copy then and paste. There was a video of me calling it like Ruby Numero Dos. Yeah. But then I started calling Ruby Numero Dos. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. Oh, and it was cute. I don't know where or how the fuck I talked about that. I don't know if it was on a podcast, but I remember somebody commented on the picture I posted of Ruby on Instagram and they were like, Ruby numero dos. And I was like, oh, and it made me like sad, happy. But I was just like, where the fuck did I talk about that? Do you want me to tell you something sad I just thought about? What? It's cute, but it's sad. What? It's cute. I'm going to tell you. So remember she had puppies? Uh So one of my old high school friends messaged me when Ruby passed because I made the post and she was like, hey, I just wanted to say that like me and my family will always thank you for giving us our doggy mm. Dexter. Aww. One of Ruby's puppies, hello, the ella. And um, she was, she told me that the day that Ruby passed, her doggy was howling all day. Aww. And she didn't know why her doggy was howling. And she was like, and he never does this. So she was like, it's probably because Ruby Aww. passed. And I feel like the doggies have like a connection together. And he probably felt that, you know, his mommy wasn't here or something. But I was like, oh, my God. Aww. It's like such a cute and pure story because yeah. it's just like crazy how doggies are connected like us humans. Yeah. But it's also really sad. It's crazy that you were telling me that because um, after I was literally thinking, I was like, oh, I wish I had like some sort of like, because I don't remember who we gave the ruby's puppies too yeah and i was like i wish i knew somebody who had one of her doggies just to like i don't know i just wanted to see but now that you're telling me that i feel like that made my heart happy because i literally yeah. was like how do i not have connections with anybody with that like ruby's doggies because we were kids but, yeah we were kids but that made me happy That's yeah so and it makes me happy because she did she had uh puppies twice mm-hmm. um i think the first time was like six second time was eight mm-hmm Something like that. But um, it makes me feel good that her puppies are living out there. So yeah. Ruby's bloodline is still out there, Aww, you know? Yeah. And she's still living through other doggies. Aww, yeah. yeah, she made me feel happy. <laughs> I told my mom and she got so sad. Aww. And she was like, I love the story, but it's just so sad. I was like, I know, but it's yeah. it's such a sweet little story. Mm. Oh, yeah, I that was cute. Know. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, it's cute. And I told you guys too. <laughs> I don't remember if I had any other nicknames besides that. I think it was just that. New knees, that, oh, that. and a steak. <laughs> <laughs> I so remember that. We'd always steak. tell Ruby, like, <laughs> we'd always tell Ruby, stay. We're like, stay. Stay. And my mom, my mom's <laughs> obvious, her English is not the best. And my mom would always be like, a steak. <laughs> but like, she'd try to say stay. <laughs> but I start laughing at my mom because I was like, a steak? Like, steak? Like a piece of steak? Yeah. So then <laughs> it kind of stuck to me. So I'd always tell Ruby, steak. <laughs> I'd be like, a steak. A steak. So yeah, I would call her like randomly. I'd be like, a steak. Oh my God. Dude. And you know what? When we were kids, we had so much time with Ruby that we taught her tricks. Oh yeah. Ruby knew, she knew how to go 
Y a ver, uh, hace mucho, no hace mucho, I was like, Louie, make her do the tricks. Ya bien viejita, yeah. and she still did, oh? But I taught her how to go up, up. I taught her how to sit, how to stay. I taught her how to lay. I taught her how, how to, to roll, roll over. over. <laughs> and uh, she would do it. So this last time he showed, I, I actually want to say it was at that Airbnb. Yeah. You like made her do everything. And I was like, no way she's going to roll over. Uh, I was going to say, she's like, <laughs> nah, bitch, that's funny. Now that you're like, now that I'm like thinking about like, yes, I'm old and I'm still having her do the tricks. Dude, like imagine un viejito ya de 80 yo like, a ver, there's una pinche marometa. Yeah. <laughs> and Rue was like, no. for a little fucking tree. And she was doing, I was like, oh my gosh, she's doing it. She was like, oh, like barely struggling. <laughs> she all struggled to do the turn. <laughs> but she oh, did it. She did it. Oh, my love. I do want to say one more thing. <laughs> I feel like this will heal my heart. Um, So it was really cute because obviously she was old. She was old. And, um, I did notice that like Ruby would get really happy every time I'd go visit my mom. So I'd Aww. always spend time with Ruby and my mom would always be like, Ruby loves when you come or like when mm -hmm. you play with her. And like, I know she did. And like, I loved being with her. So like, I would always like kiss her every time I'd go see her. But although Ruby was like, she couldn't hear the best anymore or like see, there was like this little whistle that like I would do. Oh yeah. And she immediately knew that I'd be there and she'd just get so happy. Yeah. And it's kind of from, it's a, it's a, it's a little song from me telling her like, up, up. So I'd be yeah. like, dap, dap, ni, ni. Like I would always sing that Dude, to her. Yeah, and yeah. I'd even like, dap, I'd even dap, snap. Yeah. Ni, I'd be like, yeah. dap, dap, ni, ni. Do it all remix. Yeah. Dap, dap, <laughs> and she would get all happy. And she'd just be like, <laughs> um, let me pet her. But I don't know where and what point it turned into like a whistle. So I would always do that. She would already know I'd be there. Yeah. So I would just go like. <laughs> a little song i yeah. love it so much and it's i got so really cute. happy because like um I, again i don't want to talk about what happened with ruby because it's just really difficult but um what's it called so the day that we said goodbye to ruby earlier that day um my mom brought her to my house and i was playing with her outside and, and spent time with her but i got I so her. happy because my fucking camera got a piece of it oh really yeah oh my god and she was like in my front yard you guys and um oh. i loved the little clip because i was out there with her for a long ass time but the only like little clip que si se grabó was me whistling too. really oh send me that so please. like in the little video you just see me going and she was probably like dancing in her head oh my yeah. god but we lived a very great life with her and she, I feel like she impacted every one of us in such a different way. Yeah. Um, I remember one of my, one of my favorite moments with her was, yo siempre la bañaba. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. You I would love like, giving yeah. her her baths, mm -hmm. la bañaba, and I would put her, because I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I would just want to be in my room. So la bañaba, and my mom would be like, bañala y la puedes tener en tu cama, oh, en your room. Sí. So I would get her into my room with um, her bed and everything, and she would spend the night with me, mm -hmm. and I would love it. She looked yeah. all pink every she, time she would wake uh -huh. up, bien rosita, bien Her little nose and her ears would get yeah, like all so pink. pink. But um, she impacted me and my family and my kids. Mm -hmm. She made a huge impact on my kids too. Everyone. So. My Ruby will live on forever in our yes. hearts. Yeah, and um, as, like, sad as, like, it makes me, I was happy that we were all there to um, be with Ruby, like, in her last little moments. You and goodbye to her. Yeah, like, <coughs> we're all of us are always all running all over the place, and it just so happened that all of us were there. And yeah, were even, able to, even my sister, she yeah. was on FaceTime. Yeah, and so like, it's, she was it's there. crazy because literally all of our schedules are always crazy, and I had just flew back from a trip so like it's almost like she waited for all of us to like be there for that for that specific moment. moment and then andrea's either working or at school, school. Or andrea sleeps really early and it just so happened that we were all there that like, we, she was up yeah, and yeah we were all just there with ruby in her last little moments and yeah so thank you guys for all your sweet messages thank you for allowing us to um just vent and and share these cute stories with you guys about our baby girl ruby definitely makes me feel better in my heart because yeah i wanted to just spread the love of ruby and make sure you guys um enjoy and cherish every moment you have with your fur babies give them an extra tight hug and kiss right now yeah. huge hug and kiss <sighs> yeah 
yeah you guys that's gonna be it for this week's episode and again um sorry that we missed the last episode but we were happy to see that you guys were looking for us <laughs> and hopefully we don't miss again <laughs> yeah it won't happen yeah, yeah i hope everything goes wood. good y que yeah. podamos terminar. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode. And we'll see you guys in our next one. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.